In this past few weeks, I have been asked to make an RBMK reactor using Dicoma fuel rod, Balefire fuel rod, or both of them in a single reactor. Now, as you might already know, these fuel rods are highly reactive, highly dangerous. So, in this video, I attempt to make an RBMK reactor using four Balefire fuel rods along with a single medium enriched plutonium rod. No safe type rod because this reactor runs pretty hot but also produces a lot of flux. That's why it has optional irradiation channels which work at decent speed, less than 10 seconds for a single operation. You also get over 44 million HE per second power with four Leviathan steam turbines and the water consumption is not that much. You can use a single cooling tower with single auxiliary cooling tower. I would like to take a moment to thank Bumblebee, RZ, YTX, Optimus Primal, Mentoksha and of course Bonji for continuously supporting the channel. I really love you guys. So anyways, uh, without any further ado, let's get straight into this video. Let's start with basic layouts and components needed. So for the layout, I am going with a 4x4 chunk area. As for the components, you can see them on the bottom of your screen and none of these are moderated. So simple component needed for this reactor. The fuel will be 4 Balefire fuel rods along with a single medium enriched plutonium rod. However, instead of medium enriched plutonium, you can also use similar fuel types like medium enriched neutronium or low enriched sherbidium as they have the same function. But medium enriched plutonium is the standard one. That's why I'm going with it. Also, I'm going to set the RBMK columns to height 2 using the game rule. It's better for performance and also I'm going to disable meltdowns because these fuel rods are highly, highly reactive. Now, with all of that set, let's start building the RBMK reactor. So it is going to take a 13 by 13 area. In the middle, we have a fuel rod surrounded by four control rods. Now, in front of the control rods, we will have some graphite moderators. And with this layout, we will have a five block gap between two fuel rods. So in the diagonal corners, we will have the steam channels. Placing down two more steam channels on each side like this, as we are going to place down some more fuel rods. So in total, four fuel rods going like this and the story continues. So place down more control rods surrounding the fuel rods. These outer fuel rods will have the bell fire. The middle fuel rod will have the medium and rich plutonium. Placing down some more moderators in order to slow down the neutrons. So three on each side for the control rods. And this will give us an intersection on each side. Now filling up the gap first with structural columns and in the intersection, we can place down the uh, steam channels first and with the steam channels placed on the diagonal corners like this we can start placing down the irradiation channel on every intersection for the fuel rod so now each irradiation channel will receive flux from two of the balefire fuel rods covering up the path using neutron absorbers so in case if we don't have anything to basically irradiate, then all of the neutrons will end up in the absorber. Placing down reflectors in the four spots like this and finally covering up all of the remaining spaces with structural columns. So with that done, let's make this reactor a little bit more circular so by adding six of the structural columns on each side like this in an L formation. And that will give it a nice uniform circular look. So that's the reactor done. It looks something like this. Now we can start placing down the RBMK covers, which is pretty important so that radiation doesn't leak out. So placing down transparent covers on the fuel rods so we can see the Cherenko radiation and the normal covers on every other RBMK column. With that done, the reactor should look something like this. Now we are going to place the console, set the linking device to the very middle fuel rod and shift right click on the console to make the RBMK here. Now select every boiler and once that's done, we are going to set each boiler to ultra density. And with that done, now we can start connecting our pipes here. So the top pipe will be for water, covering that up. And I'm going to supply water from the middle. That's why I also have a pipe set in the middle like this. And this will loop back from the turbine. 
that's why i have set up printable fluid cables like that with that we are going to place down steam channels and make sure to not forget any of this uh, it's an important step so with all of the steam channels placed like this double check that you have placed every one of them now we are going to place down some more pipes for ultra density so in a similar manner to water place down ultra density pipes and with that done the piping work beneath the rbmk reactor is nearly done so if you have done everything correctly then placing down the barrel setting it to water and then filling the barrel up and supplying the rbmk should fill up every steam channel that it has with water so with that step done now let's move forward and we can start working on the turbine part so placing down four leviathan steam turbines touching each other so we don't need to place any pipes in the middle this step is standard for every reactor design that you're gonna make connecting the ultra dense steam output from the rbmk reactor into the first turbine which is set to ultra dense steam and covering up all of the uh, pipes the paintable pipes like this next up in order to convert the low pressure steam back into water i am using the high powered steam condenser so connecting the low pressure steam from the last turbine going into the high powered condenser and then connecting some water pipes which will go back into the reactor it will complete a loop we don't need any buffer tank in the middle which is something you would need to do if using the industrial steam turbines so anyways with that step done connecting every turbine using cable so we can have a single power output and you can also set it to input output point which is initially what i did here so i connected the outputs of the turbine going into the high powered steam condenser so that using a single energy storage block we can store power and we can supply the high powered condenser now first things first i'm going to fill this up using an external source once it's completely filled up then we can get rid of the external power source and fill it up like this finally this is only for aesthetic purposes but i'm going to cover up the open part of the reactor the bottom of the reactor using some deco blocks for rbm now what i'm going to show here the way we are going to run this reactor is on its brink so first things first let's uh, place down the medium enriched plutonium rod in the middle with bale fire fuel rods four of them surrounding it and as bale fire fuel rod is self igniting the reactor will work even without pulling out any of the control rods so the temperature will gradually increase i have speeded up the video here and we will produce power passively like without pulling out any control rods so passively we are going to produce nearly 13.3 million hp per second and in order to turn this reactor off this is one of the downside you will need to uh, get the bale fire fuel rods out completely because they are very reactive and starting the reactor again is very simple just put the bale fire fuel rods back in and it should start running again so passively as i told you it's going to produce 13.33 million hp per second but in order to get the max power out you pull out every control rod by 42 so 42 is the magical number here any higher than that and this reactor goes boom at least in the initial phases when the fuel rod is not depleted so with 42% uh, of the fuel rods pulled out we will gradually reach a skin temperature of 3340 approx it will go higher than that but then it will fall off eventually so here we kind of reach the near maximum temperature that we have and i am monitoring it right here and the power that we are going to produce now is over 44 million hg per second out of which 2 million hg per second is going to be consumed by the high powered steam condenser so by pulling out the rods by 42 percent we are going to get 42 million hg per second which is pretty cool anyways uh, so yeah don't go higher than 42 and 
If you are running this in survival, I will recommend don't even pull out the control rods by 42. Run it at a safer temperature like say for example 30 or 35, anything like that. For the irradiation speed, uh, as I said, it takes less than 10 seconds to do this for a single operation. So yeah, pretty decent speed. And as we have more 5 block gap between the bale fire fuel rods, even if I pull out the medium and rich plutonium rod, the bale fire fuel rods won't actually explode. The opposite will happen. Flux will go down, temperature will go down. In general, the reactivity will fall off. This is why we used normal components instead of moderated components. So that it created a 5 block gap between each bale fire fuel rod from its opposite end. So yeah, placing down the medium and rich fuel rod, the medium and rich plutonium fuel rod will get the temperature and flux back again very quickly. Now here are some of the temperatures. I let the reactor run for approximately 2 hours. It didn't explode. It was running safely and I hope you have disabled meltdown. So here was the depletion at 2.84 which is nearly 3% fuel depletion for the Bellfire fuel rod. Here's 5.5. As you can see the temperature is going up. Then we have 8.7%. The temperature is still going up. But then at 13% the temperature started coming down which I assume as the reactor continues running the temperature will keep on falling. But uh, make sure that you are running this in creative first. Test it out whatever works for you based on the components that you have available in survival. If you want to swap out the fuel rods as I said you can also do that and try out different things with that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video found it helpful. If you did please do smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you have any suggestions leave them in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next one till then peace out and stay safe my dudes.